Welcome to Soccer We Like It. Today we are joined with UK and USA fans. We're going to talk about the match between Man United and Southampton coming up and what's been happening with United in the transfer market. Are they going to buy more? Are they not going to buy more? And just going to touch on a little what happened last week. We have Josh and Tarek from representing Houston Red Army in the top corner. We have Richard representing UK. We have Joe representing Houston Red Army. We have Bems representing Houston Red Army. Hammy representing Houston Red Army. And we have Kay representing the UK. Right, let's get right into the show today. Tomorrow's a game, game two. United are still on the high from beating Leeds 5-1. We can, we, can we beat Southampton tomorrow? Southampton's always been a tricky tie for whatever reason you want to see. It's always been one of those games we go, we struggle to get a win. But it is what it is. Rich, I'm going to start with you. Man, United, mm-hmm. Southampton tomorrow, what's your take? What's it looking like? Okay, um, so um, they brought out a stat today that uh, we have the chance to overtake Arsenal's record of 27 away wins. Um, oh, wow. I, think that was, I think that was set from 2004 or, or whatever. Um, the invisible season? Uh, was it the invisible season or continued yeah, from there? I think it continued from that season, I think. Ah, wow. um, so it's, it's a little bit of pressure on the lads, you know, to maintain that form. But... When we've been under pressure, no matter what type of pressure it has been in the past, we seem to collapse. So I think tomorrow is <laughs> going to be a tough game, and I think we're going to draw. It's going to be two-two. Right. That's, let me drive. Right. Let me drop into Bems back to back with uh, Richard. Bems, man, I just have to try. What we're we looking at? I'm actually uh, in a funny way. I'm actually quite positive for tomorrow. Oh, uh, what? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm quite positive for tomorrow. <laughs> I'm actually quite part. The, the reason why is because again, it's because of the the new signings. Obviously, uh, Sancho coming in. I, I expect Sancho to start. He needs to. He, they need to embed him into the team. So, um, yeah, I, 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 in my opinion, I feel the earlier the better. And then um, I think with um, I think you have to play Varane. So I mean, Southampton is a team that open up. They they don't they know they don't necessarily sit back against you, but um, they will give you a go. So. It's a, it, it, I, 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 I think it's a game that will probably play into our hands a little bit more. Yeah, they will. They may sit back a little bit, but they, they're more of an open team, but not as open as Leeds. Right. So it's kind of like it's, 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 it's in between. So um, with Sancho coming in, Pogba coming in, that's a lot of creativity with Bruno. Um, I think, uh, I mean, depends on who he plays in the midfield. I'm just going to assume Ole is going to stick with Fred and McTominay. Um, but in my opinion, I, Varane has to play. If if Varane doesn't play, then it will be an issue. If it's Lindelof, if he's, he's, he, we will we will probably concede goals. Because what, what these strikers like to do is they're physical, especially... So if I'm I mean, to play. They just go uh, um, and just stick to Lindelof because he's the weak link. And if that happens, then Southampton is going to have a chance. But if Varane plays... And um, obviously, Sancho playing too as well. Um, I'm I'm quite positive that we should come out this game with 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 um, a win. My prediction probably three three one around that area. Um, okay. If if Varane and Sancho play. All right. Let me go to Josh. Josh and Tarek. Man United Southampton tomorrow away. We're still on the high from the five nil against five one against Leeds. What's your take on tomorrow's game? Okay, well, for, first off, I just want to say that um, I, I'm, I was still trying to get my heart to restart after hearing Ben say he was feeling positive. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm glad that this is being recorded because I, I think I'm going to have to watch it later just to make sure, to yeah, to make sure that you heard it right. Uh, so, One of the post-game highlights. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, with that being said, um, I, uh, I feel like United has had a habit of going and having like a just bang out performance like we had last uh, last week, only to go and kind of rest on their laurels a little bit and and not come out looking sharp the next one. And so that's especially when it's not against like a, a top side. Right. So that's what worries me right now is that, man, they got a great, great win against decent side leads. And now you're coming out the second weekend against Southampton. And I'm worried about the the boys kind of just kind of like, yeah, you know, not just not as being into it. So I would say my prediction, though, um, I, I think we're going to concede. We're going to concede first as a result of that. 
However, um, with the introduction of new players and stuff, I'd like to think that we're not going to collapse um, and just give up give up points like we have uh, in previous seasons. So we can seed first, but then we get our mojo going, and eventually I think we go and put in some goals. So I'm thinking maybe 3-1. Right. Tarek, what do you think? I don't know well the level of Southampton, but I would say uh, I, I see you guys winning tomorrow. I think both teams are going to score, and I see even you winning. Like you guys played a really good football last like last week, so. Yeah. Okay, right. Let me go to Hammy. Hammy, my night at Southampton tomorrow. Uh, it's the first home game for Southampton in a long time. That's the only thing that makes me not that confident. And on top of that, if we go with Lindelof. Then it's then it's not gonna be a good game, but if we were on Sancho, I think he'll stick to the midfield. We might win two one. Two one. I I said two one. Yeah, I think well. two I think one. Tight, tight. Right. And yeah, for going back to the last week's game, me I was standing at the R bar. Bemzi and Joe come in one minute in. First thing Bemzi said was, "I'm all out." <laughs> As, I mean, I was kind of pissed when I saw McFred, but and then Joe calmed us down. But now still the peacemaker. So <laughs> still not. Now, I'm still not sold on Ole though. I yeah, don't yeah. blame you, mate. I don't that's, sold on him at all. That's <laughs> so. That's why I think this game is a big game to see if we can be consistent. And that was the biggest thing. Like we could go and beat Leeds six two, and then what? Next week we don't do the same thing. True. Okay. So, I'm not positive, kind of in between. Right. So you're you're, you're sitting on the fence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Let oh, me go man. to K. K. May I tomorrow? Southampton away. Do you know what? Until I saw a friend today, he's a Southampton season ticket holder, and he was saying like, I didn't even know this stuff. He said Southampton haven't beaten us at home since 2001, so 20 years. So when wow. he said that to me. Oh, and then okay. after we're talking about players they've lost, they've lost things, they've lost Ben Vestergaard. I was like, there's no way we can't win this game. And when, when I actually thought about it, I was like, at first I was a bit like, oh, maybe Ward Press will probably score a few set pieces. But then I thought, they've lost Vestergaard, solid centre-back who's good in the air. They've lost Danny Ings, who, who's a threat. And I, when he told me about the almost 20 years since they've beaten us at home, they've got a better record at Old Trafford than they have at home. Yeah, yeah. They've moved to the new stadium. I was like, yeah. But then I started thinking, what team is he going to play? I think he'll play the same team. Against Leeds. I think he'll play the same team. But I think I think we'll probably concede, but I can't see anything less than a 2-3-1 win. 2-3-1 win. Yeah, I think I'm confident. I'm confident. Okay. Joe the Peacemaker, how are you, brother? <laughs> doing good, man. Doing good. Doing good. Right. Yeah, doing. Where you? Where do you stand with United tomorrow? What's your take? Ah, man, I'm. I'm actually kind of um, gearing a little bit more towards Josh's side. Yes, um, we have improved ourselves on 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 the paper, but um, one thing, one nagging thing that I always saw last season was complacency. And yes, we had a great first game. But let's see if, if this team is really serious about getting some, um, getting far, or getting closer to the city, and um, going for some uh, some trophies this season. Then we have to have that winning mentality where we come at it every single game. So I'm confident uh, about us. Like it, of course, it's a game that we should win, but um, on paper, I, I, on paper. But if if we don't have um, leaders in the team now we've got more now with Varane there yeah but we, if we don't have people keeping these guys focused in the, in the locker room they're gonna there's gonna be complacency again the same thing with Ola Ola could get complacent too so that's why I'm a little bit on the fence and not being too confident about this game so I would say maybe a 2-1 win uh, United oh right. we could just just completely demolish them I understand they don't have Danny Ains who just scored a worldie today but um um, th these are the kind of games that made us scratch our heads last season. So I want to see yeah. what happens. Oh, yeah. dropping points there all over the damn place with low blocks. Yeah. Right, as we as as one has said, everyone has said some of some of you are giving three one, some give two one. I'm I'm on a two one. I think Southampton tend to raise the game, especially against us. And I, yes, some of the players have left, but I still feel United 
tend to, after beating a team, they tend to just, I don't know. We just, I, I got to see tomorrow's game, but I'm going with a 2-1. United should be able to beat Southampton with everything they got. Sancho, Verard, Bruno, Pogba. They should, they got enough to beat Southampton. So I think we should get 2-1. So as it stands now, the uh, transfer window closes in another 10 days. Josh, can you see United getting a defensive midfielder or anyone else, even a right back? Can you see any more transfers coming through anymore? Not, not at all. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it, we've discussed this many times that, um, you know, um, I, I, again, I was surprised that we even got what we did with Sancho. And Ryan. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, because it's like I'm, I, I haven't leave, I haven't reached Bim's negativity uh, just yet. But when it comes to transfers, <laughs> I think I am there. Okay, so. <laughs> Um, because like, again, we, we've seen this song and dance so many times where like, like we mentioned, Sancho was a last year's deal, yeah. right? We've literally been waiting a year for that to happen. Mm -hmm. you know? and remember like last year they said, oh yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. No, it didn't happen. Right. So I, I'm honestly quite shocked that, that we got both Sancho and Verona. Um, and I honestly think that that was just something that only happened because of the super league debacle that yeah. they realized that they had to do more right. than they otherwise would have in order to placate the fans. But I think now they feel that they've done enough to placate them. And so they're not going to be open enough the pocketbook anymore. Uh, and so, no, I would, I would be, I mean, now again, I was surprised that we even got such a run it, but I would be absolutely shocked if we actually had some more movement in the, in the transfer window. But Richard, yeah. any uh, more I'm signings? Yeah, I don't think so, but if we sell some players, then maybe, yeah. So, for example, Jesse Lingard. But it doesn't look like we even want to sell anymore. It's just, I don't even know. It's like we can't even sell. Or is it people don't want to buy our players or we overpriced Well, that's not the them? case, actually, because Dan James, he, he's been wanted by Leeds, you know, uh, he's a few other teams. I call, it, I call him Speedy Gonzalez because that's all he's good at is running, you know, like a headless chicken. <laughs> so many teams want him, but for some reason, he's... Ollie's teacher's pet, you know, Ollie likes him, yeah. he does as he's told in training, maybe. And I yeah. think he's one of those players that he's not going to complain if he's mm -hmm. on the bench or if mm -hmm. he's starting. So Ollie likes that type of player and he works hard. So he's he has been linked with other teams. We don't want to sell him. Jesse Lingard, on the other hand, that's this is going to be an interesting one because if he goes, I'm hearing West Ham want him and a few other clubs. They, they dropped Jesse, the price, didn't they? Drop the price. They've dropped it to I think it's 20. 25 million, which is which is a good price for Jesse Lingard. If Jesse Lingard goes, I think that we'll buy another midfielder. I don't know who, but I think we'll we'll be looking at a defensive midfielder. But if we don't sell anybody, then no, I don't think we're we're going to be bringing anybody in within the next uh, two weeks. Wow, Hammy, I. Honestly, don't think so. But like everyone said, if we sell someone, maybe that'll be a last day, last ditch signing. But again, that's just a signing to say that we did three signing. That guy, that whoever that signing will be, I don't think he gets in. He'll be the next what, Donny Van der Beek. I think wow. so. Wow. If we sign someone, and I, 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 I still don't get why we can't sell any players at all. Like only Lingard has been talked about. That's because of him, not even us. He went yeah. last year on sorry, yeah. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, like last year he yeah, went no. on the loan. And yeah, he, he went on loan. Himself. He proved himself. So he's the one who did it to himself. We didn't even try to sell him. Now, who else? Like Dan, Dan James again. I don't know what's wrong with Ollie to just keep him around. I think he'll. He thinks that Giggsy will stop being his friend. <laughs> <laughs> I but, would have thought this would have been Diallo's breakout year by giving him the opportunity to play. You know, I, I don't get it, but it is what And Diallo is. is not going, right? Even Diallo is not going now. So. He's undecided, yeah. He's undecided, yeah. He's undecided. He's undecided. He's undecided. He's undecided. He's undecided. I think he'll end up going there later on in the months, but he'll end up, he, won't get, he won't get game time. Yeah. yeah. Can, I, can I ask sure. a quick question about the defensive midfielder issue? Mm -hmm. It, do you think it's a it's just a matter of like the team not wanting to spend a certain amount of money, or is it just that right now the kind of defensive midfield the kind of defensive midfielder that we do need is just not available for like a reasonable price? Like we do, it's we would money, like man. a Declan Rice. But that's ridiculous wages that uh, West Ham are trying to pull. Yeah, like you're crazy. Like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah we, we know, I disagree. We know Leicester City would take us to the bank, right? If we try With to get uh, uh, Ndidi. Nowhere we're getting Conte. 
I mean, and no and way. it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like um, what's that kid from? Uh, he's in France, a young kid. It doesn't even look like he's, you know, in, like the, yeah. the players got to want to come, you know, and it seems like the people that we want are not really full on ready to come to United. I was well, looking at right, Ben's going, Ben's going for this. I think, I think it's not, it's, it's, it's one, one is money, and two, we have a very, very fat squad, man. We yeah. need to sell players. <laughs> we need to sell players, man. So, like if you look at if you look at like United squad, I think we, we got like 30 something senior players, if I'm not mistaken. That's yeah, it's too, that's, that's too many. That's too yeah. many. We we have, and if you look at the midfield, and I mean you got you got Pogba, you got Van der Beek, you got Matic, you got you got uh, uh, Mat- uh, uh, um Fred, you got um Dan James. Dan, I mean, yeah, Dan James, you got Lingard. I, I mean, if, if you count the number of midfielders we have, we have too many. Too many. Too many. Okay, you, <laughs> let me just keep it. Just the players that will play in that central role, right? You got like six players. What, five, six players that could play in that central role? That's too many. You have to sell. You have to sell. So it's all about you have to sell to buy and then also the money. And then and and then also, I, I mean, I mean, you all know how United have been over the years, man. They, they don't want to spend the money to get the quality players. Yeah, we're the they've done good by getting Sancho and Varane, but Sancho was from last last summer, just like what Josh was saying. And um I'm I'm really surprised they got Varane. Tell yeah. me about it, bro. Varane yeah. wasn't shocked to me. I, I thought that's that's a gimmick, bro. Yeah, that was uh that was too. that was that, that was a that's game changer good, right there. They they surprised me. But yeah to answer your question man it's it's a lot of different things but I think one of the and selling players is hard because we're, we're most of our players are on big wages, so it's hard to sell them to. So yeah, it's it's a lot of things uh, um, put together, man. But I, I I don't personally see us getting a, um, another player, man, before uh, um, the uh, transfer window isn't. Uh, I, I, and I just don't see it happening. It's just it's too close. United are they may be putting rumors out there, or yeah, we're into this player. There's. There was some rumor about we're uh, looking at this uh to uh, um Chilanaglu um Chuamini guy yeah, yeah, yeah. right yeah. Yeah. with they talked about that I mean yeah. I think it's just United just putting out it, it's them just putting out is in stories out there and just say maybe at the end of the window they'll say oh yeah we tried to but we couldn't but they probably didn't plan to right I mean, Ole's yeah. already said in his um he said I'm happy with my squad if anything comes in it's gonna be a bonus so. That it's already not, says. That good. already says he's he's not he's not expecting anything. Yeah, from what... he said. Is a, he said if anything comes in, it's gonna be a bonus. At this point, he said, "I got what I want." It, 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 it's um, it, it was an interview. I think it was after the Leeds game last week. So yeah, I, I'll, I'll be I'll be shocked if we get another player. Okay, and here's another thing with signings, right? Oh, like Sammy. even if we even if we get anyone. We have to think that Ollie only plays world class players besides McTominay, Fred, and James. <laughs> but if he wants to, if he wants to buy someone, it has to be, it has to be the best player in that position. Otherwise, he's not gonna. But if you look at the best player in that signing. position, the the best players. Well, I'll say the best available players out there. You're looking at Declan Rice. You're looking at um, yeah, with Fred and Didi. Declan what Rice. the guy from cool. Wolves? Do you know he's guys not rate the guys from Wolves? Wolves? Never. Never. Never is there too. I mean, you got, in in my opinion, I like the kid Basuma. Basuma is yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I, game today. Yeah, very good. The guy, the he guy, got the, an assist today. the guy, the guy, the guy performed like he he was outstanding today. Those are the type of midfielders that I would say we should go for. Forget right. Declan Rice. Declan Rice is good, yeah, but he's what 80, 90 mil, and you, and I hear he wants to go to Chelsea. He wants to go build yeah. his best buddy, Mason. Uh, yeah, Mount. Mason. Mason yeah, Mount. Okay. Yeah. Let's so, move but to that's, guys. You guys that's are exactly... missing out a player, though. You guys are missing out a really good player. He plays for Bayern Munich. Uh, that's Goreska. He's, he's only got one year left. Yeah, on he already signed the contract. Yeah. Nice one. Nice one. Yeah, that's true. I, he signed, I, I, he signed I, the contract. He's a very yeah, good player. He he's he was using us. Yeah, he was using Manchester United. He already yeah, signed. Yeah, what real players do? Yeah. Has he signed? Is that true? Yeah, he's signed. He's yeah. signed on. I heard, it's, okay. I heard it's hard to get those out. German players out of Germany. Very, um, that, very difficult. Players. They hard. barely like he agreed, he agreed terms yesterday. He signed yesterday. Oh, See yes, what I mean? Okay. They, they, they <laughs> use that to negotiate, to, to, to force the hand of Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich don't like 
players don't normally leave Bayern Munich to. No. They barely, yeah, yeah. barely. They hardly leave. Yeah. Okay. Sure. What's your take? Are we buying anyone else again? Is it done? Nah, the deal's done. I think <laughs> ten ten days to do a transfer. Come on, United have. Unless we get a free <laughs> Cavani, it's not happening. And United are not going to sell uh, Lingard in the last ten days because they're not going to have wow. time to to get someone who's as good, if not better. So for me, oh, damn. I think it's too late now. I think the um, the fact that they got Pereira and had to pay half the wages and to go to Flamengo, that says it all. We are yeah. happy to pay because yeah. to take our players. Yeah, so I it's think crazy. that's it. The, I think, like Ben said, they're putting names out there because when in the transfer window have United never been linked for a, with a player? Every time in the window, even up until deadline, they're linked with a player. It's not, it's mm. not, it's not. Marketable for United not to be linked with anyone. So you see what I mean? Head, it yeah. looks good on United so, being linked exactly. with everybody. Yeah. Half of the yeah. time, nine percent of the time, they are not even planning to yeah. get that guy. They're just yeah. being linked. It looks good that all it United look good. Yeah, but we. I think we've seen through that bull, that bullshit over the years. We've seen that it, we know what they're playing at. Joe, step in. I mean, yeah, it seems like it's it's looking like Ole is just gonna try to. Uh, wing it with uh, McFred. McFred. Hopefully, Yikes. hopefully that's that's it's not too too bad of an idea because if they, I'm looking at it as like maybe this season they'll play a little bit more forward. Um, they wouldn't have to be babysitting Lindelof anymore. Right. And you know I'm being an optimist about it. Uh, of course, we definitely need a defensive midfielder, but maybe if uh, we're not. Uh, looking after uh, one of our center backs, then that'll change our style of play a little bit more in the midfield. But yeah, it's not looking like if if they do get somebody, hey, hey, more pop, it, it'll pop, you you know what? It'll probably be some random Cavani type signing for some. Yeah, because reason. United tend to it's, do that. Uh, yeah, uh, Alex Ferguson like like last it. minute on the scoring goals yeah, by some, scoring some old veteran. You know, it's been what if it's been uh, like sixteen uh, or something. What yeah, if it's yeah, Sean yeah. Longstaff, Longstaff brother? Let me say, crazy like Danny Blaine comes back. I what won't be surprised. It's just, though. It's just a great for um, Paris Saint Germain. He's not going to get games over there. But yeah, mm-hmm. granted, he's he's, on, he's 31 years old, but he's a very good defensive midfielder. He's played player. in the Premier League before. He's not going to be expensive. He played Who's yesterday, there? didn't he, though? He played. He played yesterday. Well, he Against, played uh, yesterday, but you know the, the that they didn't really have many of their players. Um, Richard, the guys didn't hear who the, the guys didn't hear who you're referring to. Idris Gay. Idris Gay. Oh, Idris Gay. Oh, 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 the former um Everton player, right? Yeah, he's a good player. Yeah, yeah, yeah that good. guy's good though. That guy's good. Yeah. I would yeah, like him. I like too. him. And yeah, United I don't look good than kind of players. Exactly. That's they what I was saying. That's what I was trying to say earlier on that. I think there's some good defensive midfielders in France that you can pick up for very good prices. Look at Kante and all these guys. Kante came from the French league, you know. So I think, yeah. I think our scouting network should look further afield as opposed to just looking within the Premier League because, as we all know, Premier League plays are expensive. So I, th- I think there are some good deals to, to to look yeah, at elsewhere. It's it's just yeah. a matter of you know whether or not our our scouting team are actually on the ball. Right. Didn't uh, even Leicester City got a good midfielder this season? Uh, yeah, or whatever his name is. is his yeah, name? oh, yeah, yeah, Babakari Samari. So, yeah. why do other teams have easy to find the right fits than us? The pressure of United, yeah. you know what, what United tend to do, they, they let the players go to a decent sized club and then pick them from that club because, yeah, so you think going from the French league to Man United. How many players have we signed that are in the 2021s that are not proven and put them straight into the United team? It doesn't happen. They're, they're always on the fringes. But yeah. hopefully, like, oh. they'll be, yeah, they don't do it. Like Cleberson, people like Jemba Jemba, those are the last ones we sort of did. And they all flopped. They were never good enough to come in and start. Yeah. We always have to get people that were dominating in big leagues. So right. I, I, I don't think United... It's, it, and you got to understand it. We've got big players out flock. So for a, an unknown player to come, yeah, the pressure's the pressure's too much. It's too much. Right. Now, last week we all we saw how United demolished Leeds. The the we also saw Pogba's four assists. We saw Bruno's hat trick. What you saw last week 
can you see that happening this week despite Leeds being an open play, come and attack us kind of team? Josh, how uh, different will your last week be from this week? Well, no, and to answer your question, no, I don't think so. Uh, for reasons that I already mentioned is that one, it's like Leeds, even though they haven't been in the league for a while, we still kind of have that understanding that, okay, this is a team you got to show up for. And so, you know, we, we, we did that. We did that this, we did that the first, you know, last week we did that uh, for one of our matches last season. Right. Um, but Southampton doesn't inspire that, that same kind of thing. Not to mention it was the opening opening match. So again, I really do. I really do expect that we're going to come out possibly on the back foot a little bit uh, tomorrow. And that I think Southampton might go and grab one early just because we're we're not on our game, but I do think that I mean I'm hoping, unlike last year, that we're actually able to go and use that to motivate us to get going and actually take back control of the game in ways that we didn't before. Right, Tarek. Well, uh, so your question is like, are you going to play with the same style as last week? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see why it would change because like Pogba, he's starting tomorrow, right? He's playing. He's like at a really good level. Uh, you have Sancho, right, who's going to play. So you have lots of creative players. So, yeah, I think we're going to keep the offensive style. Okay. Richard, tomorrow, will Ole be more cautious or is he going to go all guns blazing? Hey, Richard, you're muted. Yeah, sorry. I think we're going to go try and go all guns blazing. Um, but last season, we beat them 9-0. Uh, that was the last game that we had with Southampton, right? <laughs> So I think Southampton are really going to be pumped up for this. They don't want to face further humiliation. It was embarrassing for them. So I think they're going to be a lot more aggressive towards I us. I actually tomorrow. forgot the score was nine. That's, that, that's why I'm cautious. That, that's why we I predicted we we probably want. draw with them because it, we, in the back of our minds, you know, last week we played very well. We beat Southampton before 9-0. I, I fear that tomorrow we're going to get very complacent and we're going to take our foot off the gas a little bit and Southampton are going to attack us and we're going to concede unnecessarily. That's what I think is going to happen. I hope it doesn't happen, but my, my prediction for tomorrow is that we're not going to play in the same fluid way that we played last week, week. simply because of the fact that Southampton will be up for this tomorrow. Right. Fems, hmm. how different will, are we going all guns blazing like last week or is it going to be a more completely different ball game tomorrow? It's gonna be different. It's gonna be different. It's not gonna be. It's not. It's not gonna be same like last week. Just because Leeds play differently than Southampton. That that kind of performance is what like the way we played against Leeds. We probably only see that kind of performance against Leeds only throughout the whole season. Uh -huh. Um, because just just the way it's just the way Leeds play. Now Southampton, just like what Richard said. Yeah, they're gonna be pumped up. They're gonna come at us because they just. Um, they're going to be thinking about uh, thinking about what happened last season. Nine is a nine zero loss. They're, they're going to really want to come and show us something. But what I think works in our favor in this in this just like what Kay said is that uh, uh, they lost uh, Vestergaard, which is I think th their best defender. They lost Danny Ings, so they're they're a little bit weaker than last season. Um, so now coming into coming in, into the play. That's why I said if we play certain players like Varan and Sancho, it it will give us the edge. But again, you gotta know this is the first time we're going, we're playing away um, to is in we're playing against uh, um, away fans. Mm. Throughout last season, the reason why we kept that unbeaten record away is because if you look at it, there's no is in there's nobody in the stand. So even if we <laughs> when we're going to go down, we still. I mean, just just imagine when you're down two nil. And you have fans booing you. It's 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 it's, it's going to be harder. So that's yeah. that's the challenge there that um that I like to see how United uh, uh face because I do agree that we probably may concede first, but uh, um I think the signings of Sancho and Varane, if they play, now if, if they play, play, if Sancho and Varane play, that's what's gonna uh, um make the difference because uh, um in 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 depending on what Ole goes with, I think he's gonna play Pogba. Bruno, um, Sancho, and then Greenwood up top. If he does that, that that is that's a very creative, uh, um, very creative front four. Like you mm -hmm. should be able to create. You should, I mean, you got speed there too. With um, I mean, Sancho's, um, well, I guess maybe not that much speed, but yeah, but you got a lot of creativity. So, um, and then Varane shows up the back line too. So, I mean, I, I think, I think, I think we got a chance here. It's gonna be. 
it, I expect it to be open, but not as open as Leeds. Right. I expect it to be open, and the fact that it's open uh, um, to a certain extent will work into our favor. So, and that's why I said, I mean, yeah, you 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 can never tell. I just hope United are not complacent. I hope they go there knowing that they got to get the job done. And if they have that mentality, and if I'm going to repeat this, if Varane plays in center back, if Lindelof plays, forget what I'm saying. It's all out the window. <laughs> I mean, step in there, please. Yeah. yeah, I completely agree. If Lindelof plays, I am hoping McTominay gets someone a red card and we play against 10 men again. That's how we get the 9-0 win. But in honesty, I think we'll sit back even if Baran plays for a while just to feel it out. It's the first away game mm. with with the fans and ground. So yeah, I think we'll sit though. back. Yeah, we'll sit back, see how if they are attacking us or they are just if they, if they try to feel us out. Maybe they are trying to attack us because it's their first home game, or if they are trying to just hold their not concede, then we probably have to start attacking. I think this is where Ollie's strategy, like no one has seen him change things in game, but this is where he has to be like, okay, stop, just keep going. They are not coming for us. You need to keep going. Okay. I mean, to be to be okay. honest, personally, oh, hold on, Joe. Okay, quickly. Yeah. Um, are we going all guns? Are we going all guns blazing tomorrow? I've got a feeling he's going to play in the same team. I don't think he'll start Varane for some reason. I think I if he makes a feeling as change, well, he won't start Varane, you know. If yeah. he makes a change at all, it'll be Sancho for James. But I've got a feeling they'll both come on. But I don't think he'll start them because obviously it's an away game. It's quite an intimidating ground. Yeah. And, it, and it's... I, I, Fans in I the think, stadium now. Yeah, well, I think it's pressure to put them in. The, if they were going to play them, the game at home would have been the best game. Exactly. I think the team's suited. If it's not broken, don't fix it. And I just think, like some of us were saying, there'll be a, a slow start. They got beat last week 3-1 after going 1-0 up. And they're looking a lot weaker than they've been before. So I think they'll be very tight. And I just think they'll try and play a low block. But I still think we'll break them down. And we've got players on the bench to, to come on that can impact the game. So, yeah, I think unless we have a stinker or someone gets sent off for us, I can't see how we can lose that game. Right. For me, it's even like set pieces. Though they haven't got best of guard, we will be stronger on set pieces than they will. And they've lost... Um, Bertrand as well. Oh, they lost Bertrand oh, yeah. too. Oh, man. Yeah, well, they lost they're... Bertrand, best of guard. Are Black... they replacing all these players? Did they replace any of these players? They're just selling they got, all... um, Armstrong from Blackburn, but he, he was in the championship. I know he scored oh, last God. week. So, for me, they've lost a lot of experienced players in that team. So, yeah, I can't say we, we won't win that game. So. Right. Joe. I think they'll be happy to just get a draw. So. Right. So, Southampton will be happy with a draw. Joe, are we going to guns blazing? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I would imagine he plays the same exact team. Um, the same exact as him. So you don't see Varane I mean, starting tomorrow? No, I mean, okay, so Varane starts. Varane has to start. Like, Has he got enough point. training he, yet, though? I mean... Come on, man. The guys come on. No, no, it doesn't matter. He's a world class. training does he no, need? No, for, for, no. It, it, it doesn't <laughs> matter. EPL, he, bro. He, EPL. He, he, I mean, the guy's uh, won Varane, four Champions Leagues. Yeah. He's he's played against United, Chelsea, he, Liverpool. He's played against the big teams. He played against Southampton. If you match fit though, oh. remember we had to quarantine. Yes. Typical Britain. Yeah, <laughs> like, true, he's won the World Cup, but has he played? Oh, in throw him in, man. man. He should be ready, man. I'm being honest. He hasn't played against Southampton before, has he? <laughs> because so, they're not the same league. So he's, he's come on, man. Italy. This is, I'm talking Italy. about those nitty gritty. This is one of the best defenders that just in the world. You're talking you. about this is one of the best defenders in the world. Same. You mean to tell me you can't play around against Southampton? Tim, Tim, come on, man. He played in the Euros. He played in the entire season. <laughs> hey, on, you, I mean, football, in, uh, football, Liga. football is 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 is, is, dif- is differential by stages. I, I, he might I, be up there, but when it comes to them small teams who have nothing to lose, when on was a the last day. time he played? About three, four, almost a month ago. That's the last yeah. time Veron played a game. Four nine minutes. minutes. It's not ninety minutes in him. He's trained for what? Not even a full week. Yeah, but this is a world class athlete. You're making yeah, something like the he's body, been, he's the been, body been, doesn't. Doesn't remember the the medals. Okay. I, had, I had you know what? He's, he's you know, let me say something. He knows what it is. He knows how to get ready for a season. 
He plays and he, at the La Liga. He he's, played, he's played at the top level for so long. Yeah, he's, he's not a he's big body in Not so in Luke, England. Let me say one thing. Uh, is it, uh, uh, Ole said in his press conference, he said Varane looked very good in training. He said, yeah. Varane he said that against Diallo last strong. season. Didn't he say that he's, about Diallo last season? What happened? Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Okay, if you look at the same energy, right? Okay, let, let, let's look at this, right? When when uh, Bayi played so well for a period of time, right? Mm. Lindelof was injured. Mm. Well, he had a back injury. Right. When Lindelof was ready to play, he said bye bye bye, and he put Lindelof back in. Yep. Because that's what he that's what he trusts. Now he yes. spent money on getting Varane, right? Yep. So why spend that money on a world class player that you have that you have hyped up in your in, in, in your press conference that he's physical, he's fast, he, he doesn't want to make mistakes in the game, he wants to make mistakes during training, he's he's this and that. I mean, yes, he's not he's not trained. For uh, um, he's only trained for a week, but but he did train he, with him. as well. Remember, that's a quarantine. Yeah, that's a quarantine. Yeah, I agree. But I heard that he was actually he was, he was training. training before yeah. the quarantine. So yeah, yeah. I think he that was works in his favor too. So I mean, you gotta. I don't know what he's gonna do. You have to play Varane. You have to. Well, well, we, we'll see tomorrow if he you has. Gotta... To. We all know Ole is very stubborn. Ole is stubborn. Look at Van der Beek. Look at Diallo. He remember when Diallo came. He's blowing up in training. How many times did we even see him in the whole in the whole season? Four. Ole five. very gonna lie. Ole just loves to run his mouth and give you. Remember, remember after Everton when we lost these exactly. players, you won't see some of them again. Yeah. Them. yeah. yeah. Do you true. remember the season that <laughs> That's true. That's he took true. over? He said That's some true. of these players. This is the last. guy. Hey, that guy just runs his back. He knows, he know, he's like, he knows what to say at the right time. That's put it that way. That's what Hammy, you were about to say something. Come on. No, I was just gonna say he did train with Real Madrid. So besides the lockdown, I think he was training before and after lockdown. Right. And with the world class player, you you can't I mean, what if we win? Let's say we win tomorrow again, six zero or five one. You can't be like, okay, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So what? He just keeps on. We wait till we make a huge mistake. Yeah, like what? Yeah, like uh, you wait for the right time. You come into a position where he is exactly. the right time. Wait for the right time. Remember what happened to Lauren Blanc when we threw him in? Exactly. <laughs> Did he have four Champions League before he came to us? No, Lauren Blanc had just won the World Cup, bro. Exactly, had just won the World Cup. But did he have? But did he have Champions League trophies before he came to us? I don't think. I don't think he had. But he had won the pinnacle. He had won the World Cup. He was the guy that was the central back for Man United. So he was. He was so bad because he was. He was thirty-five. But yeah, he was he experienced. Was old, but okay, you see, you see, you see there. Like, I tell you what. I, I tell you what. I went to watch a game with Arsenal, at Arsenal, and at the old Highbury Stadium. We played Arsenal. Arsenal Henri destroyed us because Laurent Blanc could not catch Henri. Okay, Henri is one of his very fast, but Laurent Blanc had no legs. That's why they had to go by Rio. I'm telling you, it was that. But he was 35, though. You said 35. Yes. Now, yes. Now, what now, I'm saying is, is at his. Um, he's at his prime. He's 28. I get that. I, all I'm saying is. Despite being a world class player, yeah. playing in a league that is brand is new, it it's kind new, of yeah. takes time to. I get agree. Into it. I agree That's with it. that. But I, you got to. I love his credentials. Yeah, what, yeah, what you play him, though. You gotta, the, the he's chemistry. Gotta get... He's not had no chemistry with Maguire. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay so when is he gonna get, get that chemistry? You never play with someone. It's easy. You gotta get. He's gotta get a chemistry. But you're learning somewhere. on the game. You're learning in the game. Well, I I see you. You guys have good points. I'm not. I'm not knocking y'all down. You have very good points, Josh. Um, do you I see mean, Veron starting tomorrow? Um, I do. Um, simply because, again, I, I would also imagine that um, it's not just Ole. I think Ole is probably in contact, is in talk, um, has talked to ownership. And again, I also, I see that Verona signing as being something to placate fans. And so I think if, they've, if we've got such a big signing like that, you, you've got to put them in. Right. Um, so I don't know. I mean, yeah, I, I know Ole's stubborn and stuff sometimes, but I think given we know that he's there, I I would be really shocked if he if he doesn't come in because again, the fans we want to see him, and I'm also I'm also the same way. The guy's 28, world class footballer. Um, okay, maybe he's in quarantine, but um, you know this is not a guy that's known for being fat and lazy. Okay, like this is a guy who's going to go and make sure that he's keeping himself fit 
even if he's he is won more Champions League than Man United as a club. Right. Exactly. So, um, so no, I, I, I really think if, if you're Ole, I don't know how you don't go and put him in the lineup at some point tomorrow, because again, that, that was, like I said, ownership is still going to be trying to get the fans to forget about Super League debacle and stuff and going and putting your new signing in is a good way to do that. If you're keeping him on the bench, I don't know, I don't know why you would, why you would do that. So, it's, mate, it's uh, cool as a sub, but I can't see him starting. You can't say let me go around. Let me go around. Josh, is he starting? Yes or no? Well, so no, I think that's the more likely scenario. I don't think he starts. I think he comes on as a sub because that also goes and even more, you know, when somebody comes on as a sub, it's almost like highlighting them even more than when they're starting because then all the attention is on that one guy when he's at the at the center line coming in and stuff. So that I think would be the more likely scenario. Richard, does Veron start? Yeah, um, I I was agreeing with Kay. I was actually agreeing with Kay that he'll probably be on the bench. But if you look back in 2016, Pogba made his debut against Southampton, right? He didn't train much that week. He'd come back from his holiday for over a month. He was in the Euros. He, he hadn't kicked a ball at that point for, for a long period of time. And he finished the whole 90 minutes, yeah? So... Going back to Varane, if you look at Varane, he's very athletic. He's not, you know, he's not, you know, true, one of these true, guys true. that needs, you know, plenty of time to be eased back in. He, he, you can tell that he looks after himself. When he came back from the Euros, he was training with Real Madrid. So I'm actually confident that he will start. Um, it all depends on Ali, though. You know, Ali's very cautious. He might think if I throw him into the deep end, mm. will it backfire? Mm. But Look, like like Bems has been saying, Varane is a world class player. These, these these are the games that you put play him in, and you know introduce him to the Premier League. He's not he's not like a, a new kid on the block that's just you know barely turned twenty and you know he's 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 just feeling his way into his professional career. Right. He he's been there and done that, so I think that he will start. Okay. Now Sancho is the other the other thing. I don't I'm not sure if Sancho will start. Sancho wow. may be eased in. And he may prefer Dan James ahead of him. But I think Brown will start tomorrow. Right. Ben, Veron started tomorrow. You you think he's starting, right? Man, I, you're I, hoping he starts, it. but do you yeah, think yeah, he starts? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I hope he starts, but knowing Ole, he, he Ole may probably start Lindelof. But if you look at the center back position, it's a position where you don't you don't sub center backs like midway yeah. through the game, except this, except that center back is totally like terrible during the game uh um like you you, you don't sub center backs except center back is totally terrible or center back oh, is injured. um injured. or is injured so if if Lindelof starts that game I don't see how Varane gets into the game except Lindelof is terrible or someone gets injured right but are we win five one well, I was gonna say, but if we yeah. go out, we jump up with a big lead, then yeah. that also makes it less risky. Yeah. Makes well, it yeah, risky. yeah, yeah. You could say, yeah, if we, yeah, in, 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 in yeah, that's true. In and that and sense, if, we, if, we're if he starts, all eyes are on him straight away. If he makes a mistake, he's gonna exactly. Be yeah, all, all eyes are gonna. But the thing about it is, the thing, the thing about it is that it's, you got to put him in at some point. In my opinion, oh, I, that. I was thinking they're gonna probably save him to the yeah. next home game, whereby yeah. okay. that's what I said, Newcastle. Comfortable. Yeah, you know. But oh, wait, Hammy, yeah. is Veron starting tomorrow? Uh, what I think, I think he should. But <laughs> with We've Ole, it. it's just hard to predict, man. Uh, I don't think so. Right, Joe, is Ole starting tomorrow? I know you are thinking Veron is starting. I know you already got the, oh. the team sheet. Hey, man, just go ahead and kill that noise. <laughs> he was bought. He was bought here specifically for the reason. I, I I know Lindelof. that yeah yeah uh, yo we placed Lindelof you've been replaced man he's a world class player I don't want to hear nothing about he needs time to acclimatize what was it I mean no 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 he's a world class player get him in there we need to figure out what his fault is we need to figure out what he needs the partnership we need to solidify that partnership with Maguire as quickly as possible I, if, I see if your we want to focus into like doing something this season that partnership which then it would be the fi- uh the, the final piece to that back four needs to be solidified there should mm-hmm. be no question as to who's going to be our starting back four 
for the rest of the season moving forward. So that's why he has to start. I mean, sink or swim, it doesn't matter. This is the British media. All eyes is going to be on the uh, Varane. Yeah. This is Manchester United. All eyes are going to be on our game. Yep. So that's that's going to be a constant no matter what happens. Yeah. Right. So just get him in there and let's go. Like, like uh, no, there's no more pity well, Joe, anymore. Do, do you remember when Vinic first came? Vinic and everywhere, they had stinkers. But yep. no one really okay. talked about it because it was Fergie. Just yeah. for you. Yes. <laughs> Even who remembers Lindelof's debut under Mourinho? Yeah. He was, he considered, I think, he was responsible for the goal that Brighton even scored. I think he was a mess, absolute yes. mess. But, yes. but, but, <laughs> it's not but, easy, but, I'm telling you, bro. It's a lot. Of I, pressure. I understand it's not easy, but you know, we kept on playing Lindelof and we kept on playing Vidic. Both of them obviously went two different routes, but playing them gave us the ability oh, to make that, that decision. We that. made that decision with Lindelof, with Varane, but uh, with Vidic, he got better. So that that's uh, and, and he was in a great things. team as well. This is a great team, but like, we've not won nothing. That team was this a is, winning team. This that was a, a winning team. team. This team has not won a sausage, bro. This is not but you know what? You know what though? <laughs> this is the best squad we've had since we won the, the Prem. It's only good if we win something. There's no point having to put on the paper. You don't win the <laughs> I understand that. I understand that. I understand that. But I feel like with, with this team. Ole has definitely, this, this is why this is a make or break season for Ole. With yeah. this team, you can only play one way. There, there's no more, we can't play our style anymore. He has all, he doesn't have all the tools. So you're saying he has all the tools enough. now. You're he's saying he's, he's fully tools. kitted up. He's fully from top to bottom, maybe with the defensive midfielder. But if you're a, if you are a manager that have the balls to think you can manage Manchester United, you can get over not having that defensive midfielder exactly. to do something with this squad. Okay. You should be. Right. And if you can't Only do that, time you need to find your time. way up. Uh, Richard mentioned something about Sancho starting tomorrow. Josh, where do you stand with Sancho tomorrow? Is he going to stick with uh, uh, Sonic down the right, as in Dan James? Sonic. <laughs> Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, bro. At least Sonic gets some rings. So, no, I mean, I, I'm not as up on, on Sancho as I am on uh, Veron. Um, I think, um, I think if anything, Veron is much more likely, I think, to come on than, than Sancho, Sancho. Would, be, would be my take, just because of all the stuff that we already mentioned about Veron. I mean, it's mm-hmm. just, so. Yeah. Tarek? Uh, I'm not only thinking with Tarek, thinking just like, you stick with it and then like, we'll get him in at some point. Okay. Richard, do, do, do you see James starting tomorrow and Sancho coming in as a sub? Or you, okay, you see so, the other way around? No, no. I think I think Sancho will be on the bench. But I think Greenwood would be moved back to the right. Cavani will go up top. Mm. Uh, Bruno behind them. And then on the left will be Pogba. So Sancho will come on uh, from the bench. Okay. Hammy. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a good question. Like, is who is on our bench? If Cavani and Marshall are on the bench, then Sancho is probably going to start. Or Greenwood up top and not Dan James. I, I hope it's never Dan James anymore. But, <laughs> like, he's the only player who played bad in the Leeds game. Like, no one else. Like, even Fred got a goal. <laughs> but I think Marshall should be on the right if anyone else. If it's not Sancho. Right. Yeah. The, so, if, if Lingard is still there, he, he might start Lingard. I want no, me to Lingard start. Lingard is not starting. Lingard is not starting. Not a million years. Mm. <laughs> He'll put Pogba on that. He'll put Pogba wherever you think Ling, uh, Lingard should be playing <clears throat> before he'll play Lin, uh, uh, Lingard at that position. If you think yeah. Lingard's yeah. supposed to be playing on the Lingard's left. Lingard's been at Donny van der Beek. Yeah. <laughs> Donny, Donny don't get on the pitch, so Lingard... <laughs> Ben. We're gonna be looking to be in the match day squad. <laughs> He's like if he travels with the team. <laughs> ben, is, is is Sancho starting tomorrow, or is it Sonic that's starting on the right? I, I, I think uh, I think I'm with the guys on this, man. I I, I think um, uh, yeah, I think I think Sancho probably may not start. I think Sancho may start on the bench. It, it, just the, the more I think about it, it, it the more I I feel Sancho may not start. I, I mean. And uh, Richard made a good point there. Um, he, he, he talked about Cavani. Um, I mean, Cavani is available. Technically, he's available. I know he's probably had just a week's uh, um, training. But um, 
if Cavani is ready, I, I think um, you can see Cavani up top and then Greenwood on the right and then Pogba on the left and then um, and then Bruno in the middle. And then, but Sancho will play. Sancho would probably come on in the second half, probably. Sancho is definitely going to play. Whether he's going to start, probably just the more I think about it, he's probably, he probably may not start. Yeah. Right. Joe, Sancho starting tomorrow? You know me. Again, okay. Central you you, you already have a championship winning team starting. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Wait, dreams are free. You know that dreams are free, right? <laughs> With both of the players that we just brought in, right? They were brought here for a specific reason. Sancho is another one. Okay. Sancho is here to play low block teams like Southampton. Okay. It makes no sense to even start Dan James over him. That, that is only, not up. me. They don't, they don't only. open up wide enough for him to be able to do anything. It makes more sense to start Sancho. And just like how we need to solidify the relationship between Varane and Maguire, we need to establish that relationship between Sancho and Aaron Juan Basaka and that right side. We don't have the outlet anymore with Rashford, right, and Shaw. So we need more options on That's both right. sides of the That's both true. sides of the pitch. So again, he's a great player. He's not some youth that we're trying to get out of the uh, academy. This is this is a record fee that we paid for him. He yeah, he didn't get that many games uh, during the Euros, but but he's a young he's a young kid. You know he's hungry. Get him in there. Eat you know sink or swim. Let's go. This is United. Let's not let's let's not stop. I mean, we need to stop this. Like people, people are not being like given the opportunity to fail at United. We, we feel I feel like we we are coddling so many of these players, and part of the reason that's one of the reasons why some of these guys they stay at the uh, at the um at the club for way too long that they than they're supposed to. You know, we need to find out if he's good enough, if he's ready, and then if he's not. We need to sort something out so that we got we got to think about the rest of the season, you know. Let's let because there's never going to be a right time. Bring him in first time. Let's go. Let's let's start getting that 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 right side established because like the whole of last season, all of our attack, most of our attacks, a good sixty percent of our attacks comes from the left side. We will become too predictable. Let's get him in there. Let's get it. Southampton is the kind of team that will give him some confidence. You know, you know his little techie moves. You know, here, here and there, this is not... We're not going to wait till we play Liverpool to start these guys. There you Let's go, Joe. You tell, them, you tell them. Stop, Joe, you tell them. tell them. Okay. There's, there's no guarantee Sancho even play on the right. Listen, uh, all these pen- pencils are getting the Sancho to start. It's Newcastle at home. That is the game where Sancho will start. They've got set maximum. We'll have Sancho. For me, the, the Sancho thing... They need to get him, give him time because what, what people are not realizing, Sancho plays the game a lot differently to a lot of our wide players, have, like Sancho, um, like Rashford or Marshall. Sancho does a trick and beats a man, gets the ball in the box. I don't think there's many players in our team that are on that same wavelength. If, if Cavani starts up there, great. But if you've got a Marshall or a Greenwood up there, then you need ball to feet. Yeah, ball to feet. And Sancho's not always. Sancho can mix his game up, and he's he's tailor made for Cavani. Sancho is for that sort oh, yeah. of striker. He's tailor made for that. So if if Cavani doesn't start, I think Sancho's wasted, personally. Right, right. Well, let's not let's not forget about Bruno. Like if he if if having Bruno there also, right? I would say like maybe a triangle where you got Bruno, Sancho, yeah. and uh, uh, and Juan Basaka, right? Having a technically skilled player on the right uh, on the, on the right wing position gives Bruno more options. He leads the game more. Definitely, look, 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 look how open we were against Leeds, and we were at home away. You can't be playing that expansive because we'll get we'll get punished. We will get punished. Pogba goes forward. Bruno's playing like a striker. But Tommy and Fred, they were getting exposed last game, and I know we were running forward a lot as well. Um, the last game. So for me, it's too top heavy for me. Sancho's Sancho's more for the the Champions League. I think those are the games where we bought in the Varans and the Sancho's. That's why they were brought in. It was for the Champions League. I don't think it was for the league personally. Because look what happened last season in the Champions League. Oh, not last season. The season before. We're trying to get to the level where 
we can get into the Champions League and stay in there season in, season out. Like for me, the, the, the owners are smart. They lost a lot of money yo yoing, spending a lot of money, sacking managers. For me, they brought in Sancho and Varane so we can secure top four and that Champions League revenue is coming in season in, season out, especially after COVID's been happening. So for me, it's the, the, a lot of fans are thinking it's for the league. We'll get a centre midfielder. We'll get the the, the, the owners like Joe um, Joe said earlier because of the Super League and the the, the fans protesting. They, they they got lucky with Iran personally. It's just the timing, the finances. That wasn't one that was planned and structured. There was the Sancho one was from a year before, just like the Bruno one was from a season before. But Iran they they got lucky. It was like a lucky dip. It was like. Yes, we're my hands together. Yes, get him. So yeah, I, 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 I think would, I would have to respectfully disagree that we bought Sancho for the Champions League. I thought we bought Sancho in because we have a problem of creating chances that in the final third against low block teams, and that's a problem yeah. that we had both in the Champions League and in, and the, in the league. So if we, if we want to get closer, we just if we want to get closer, we need to score more goals. We need yeah, to create, and we want to score more goals. We need to create more chances. Yeah, especially and down that's the what right. we weren't doing. That's what we weren't doing in the final. Because Wamba Saka gets against. down that right side, yeah. and he can't deliver anything. Look, decent. Well, I, I don't think they coach him to cross Wamba Saka. The, the the amount of times he gets there and doesn't cross it, for me, it shows that he's not he's not been encouraged to do that. It's almost like tactically get to the byline, yeah. pass it back. Yeah, yeah, he's doing what Valencia. Right. He's, he's, do he's doing what Valencia used to do in his later time yeah. at, at the United. Yeah, much, get yeah. to the ball, start cut coming backwards instead of crossing back, the yeah. ball. Moreno will tend to pass it back. Like, what mm-hmm. are you doing? Well, it's it's not Man no City do. Man City and Liverpool. Do, well, not as much Liverpool. Milner, Man City do a lot. They get to the byline, they cut it back for a tap in. They, they that's they don't get. They don't really cross the ball in Man City. If yeah. you watch them play, get to the byline. Did it? Did it? Movements in the number in the box, put it back for tapping. They don't really cross the ball into the box. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Liverpool's, Liverpool's I, I, I agree with them. Um, I agree with Kay and, and um, Joe. I agree with you both. Um, Joe, I, I do think that we need to open up teams, especially those guys playing low block, block in the Premier League. But Sancho's profile is that of a continental player. So I, I was in Spain this week, yeah? And a lot of these guys I was speaking to, Real Madrid fans, said they would have Sancho in their team because of how he plays. If you look at his game, he's, he doesn't play like an, a typical English player. You would think sure. if, you, if, you, if, you, if you didn't really know much about him and you just saw a game for the first time, you wouldn't think he was English because, like Kay said, he likes to give and go, do a little skill and then um, work his way into the box and then feed the striker. That's why Cavani is perfect for somebody like Sancho and Haaland was perfect for somebody like Sancho. But the problem that we have is Aaron Wan-Bissaka. I'm not sure if Aaron Wang Bissaka is going to be on that same wavelength that Sancho had with previous right backs like Hakimi and and and, and other guys when he was at Dortmund. Because yeah. Aaron Wang Bissaka is not he's he's not necessarily an overlapping right back. So I think that Sancho's style of play, if you look at him, is suited to yeah, like Kay said, Champions League football. He's a very you know he plays like he's playing on the continent, and that's why he suited Dortmund. So it's going to be interesting to see how he uh, integrates into the Premier League. Hmm. Well, it all depends on his relationship Good with left. Aaron Wan-Bissaka. But don't forget that he can also play on the left. So it will also exactly. depend on his relationship with Luke Shaw as well. So it's going to be interesting. I've, I've, I've got, you know, I, I do believe that he'll be a success, but he, I don't think he'll be an overnight success. He, he's, he's, he, 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 will, he will slowly come into form. He will feel his way for, for the league and then he'll explode. I don't think it will be like, bam, straight away. You know, you'll yeah. see the best of Sancho. I, totally I think... Agree. I totally I, agree. But Hamis, going to say something. Yeah, I just think this is another reason why Van der Beek should be in the midfield because him, Sancho, Bruno, that will be a terrifying midfield. Like, McTominay doesn't have it in him to give and go. Fred is... He just cuts off the passes, basically. He doesn't have a good pass in him. I think Van der Beek and Sancho, when they both play together, I think that would be something to watch out for. If Ole can trust it to work. That, that, <laughs> it, Van der Beek is a good We player. need a CDM, though, if you're going to do all I, that I, stuff. I just don't think Ole believes... 
I, like I said, if you notice, Ole uses the same trusted players, a bunch of 14 players and burns them out. Now he's got additional players. So will he utilize it? Only time will tell. Now we're going to quickly go to the prediction. Josh, what was, what's the score tomorrow? Um, like I said before, I think we're going to concede first. Um, but then I think we're going to turn around after that to end up with a 3-1 result. 3-1. Richard? Um, I think it's going to be 2-2. Two -two. Uh, excuse me? 2-2, two -two, draw. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Yeah, 2-2. Two -two. Um, Bruno Fernandes will be one of the scorers. I'm not sure who else will get the goal, but we'll concede. I think we'll concede a, a late goal. Wow. Yeah. And this, is all with, and this is all with Lindelof in the lineup, right? I, I, I think that li <laughs> I don't know. Even if Ferran starts, I don't think it's going to be the easiest of games. Right. Yeah. Hey, 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 right. hey, Richard, you might be absolutely right because there is some historical precedence to that. Last season, when we had both games where we blew out the teams, the following next game, both games were both ties. Exactly. So that's that's where exactly I'm what Josh exactly what Josh said from the, the beginning. We beat these teams up the following week. Who remembers the game we went under Marina? We beat Man City three to that historical game. Yeah. The following mm -hmm. season, we following game we lost to West Brom one 0 Oh, at home. It's exactly. So, um, Bems scores tomorrow. Okay. Um... I'm, since I've I, I, I've been quite positive about this game, I, I I have a different feeling about about is in tomorrow. I I feel I feel positive. I think I think we will win three one, but again it depends. Let me think. I I I think I think we'll win that game three one. I think I I I just feel I feel that um. I mean, hopefully, well, I feel the confidence from last week. I just feel something a little different from, is in the way, because the way we played last week was, um, yeah, even though we've played similarly, that is in similar way, is in last season, but there is some kind of confidence with that team. Um, and and, 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 and I, I hope it, it carries over to, to, to uh, tomorrow. I think, I think we should win a game 3 1. Looking at Southampton, they've lost big players, just like what Kay said. Uh, um, I, I see no reason why we should lose, or uh, is in we we definitely have the tools. Um, Varan, if Varan plays for sure, guaranteed, yes, we will win. Lynn Love, I'm a little shaky, I'm a little shaky out, but we should win them 3 1. All right, Joe, I'm gonna stick with my 2 1 prediction, uh, only because um, the team has not proven to me yet. Well, you said this is a championship winning team, <laughs> I did. <laughs> Well, 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 yes, I, I said with a world class if, defender, a world class right, right winger. Okay. Uh, I, I, I'm messing yes. with you. Oh, no, no, oh, no. I, I get. I thought we could have done bits last season, but we did not hate. have the winning mentality, and that's why I'm giving them the two one because I haven't seen that winning mentality for the right. team yet. Of course, yes, second game of the season, but once right. I see that, maybe the second game with Southampton at Old Trafford. Hopefully, with with yes. the with the way I've seen their mentality throughout the season, I'll be able to say three nil, three one, and you know we can go for well, right. five five one shit. Okay. Yeah, for me, it's nothing but a win, and the only reason I say that this season is, you look at our bench. Oli cannot wait until the last five ten minutes. It, there's too much in that team now. It's, yeah. Even Southampton, they'll be quick. They, tomorrow they're gonna be. They're gonna be shaking in their pants tomorrow. Pogba's got a swagger in his and in Bruno has. So even if Cavani or Sancho doesn't play, for me, the confidence is sky high. And I think Southampton, they're, they're gonna they'll they'll be they'll be happy to get in there with a draw. And wow. like I said, they haven't beaten us there for 21 years. 20 years. So for me, we've got too much on the bench. I was looking at Southampton's bench last week. And they haven't really got nothing on the bench. So if they want to change the game, the only danger is war price for me or set pieces. Yep. Well, yeah. apart from right. that, yeah. or a mistake, I can't see them penetrating and breaking us down personally. Wow. I think we've got right. too much in our locker, so 3 1 for me. Hammy. Yeah, I think I, over talking with you guys, I think I got a little more confident than sitting on the fence. So I would okay. say. Two, one. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
<laughs> well, guys, it... it's been an absolutely great show. So, you're, so Hammy, you're saying 2-1? Two, one. Yeah, 2-1. Two, one. Two, one, yeah. Two, one, yeah. So apart from Richard, who said 2-2, mm-hmm. everyone has said three points. Okay. Well, we shall wait and see. Well, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure with this show today. You had from Josh and Tarek representing Houston Red Army. We've had it from Richard representing the UK. We've had Kay from the UK. Josh, Joe, the, the reasonable one. And we've had, we've had Bems from Houston Red Army and Hammy Houston Red Army. Thank you, guys, for your, present, your presentation today and giving us your point. It's going to be a great game tomorrow. I, I can't see... I would say 2-1 United. I'm happy with three points, but I can't see a 5-1. Only if completely oh, yeah. Southampton oh, fall yeah. apart. Only if Southampton yeah. fall apart. They're a, a tougher team than Leeds, but, you know, I don't know. We'll just have to wait to see. So, so thank you guys for everyone. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and we will, so I'll see you in our next video. Guys, thank you very much. All UK, right. good evening. Houston, good afternoon. See you guys in our next video. See you guys later. Take care, guys. Take care. Bye. 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 B